Hello, everybody. Welcome to the County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. We are bringing you this broadcast from the Utah Association of Counties Annual Convention down at the Dixie Center in St. George. By introduction, Victor Iverson, County Commissioner from Washington County and past president of the Utah Association of Counties, Ricky Hatch, who is from Weber County, and he is the current president. And the incoming president next year uh, will be Stan Summers, Commissioner from Box Elder County. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks for having us, Chad. So the, there's, there's kind of a line of progression. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a turnover. Uh, you know, you, you move up through the ranks, you know, second vice president, first vice president, president, past president. How important is that continuity to an organization? Well, I think it's it's really important. It's it's one that a lot of organizations like the, the Association of Counties follows. It helps uh, a person kind of come in and and get familiar with the issues. By the time they they become president, they're they're familiar with the concerns and and how to move the organization forward. So, I think it's a it's a great model, and and I appreciate that the Utah Association of Counties follows it. So is, is that institutional knowledge that seems to be <clears throat> passed on from generation to generation, has that already been beneficial to you? Hugely. Uh, the first year I was a little bit swimming. Like I just thought, I'm just going to listen because I have no clue what's going on. And really it's been helpful, especially after the second time you've seen, you know, the budget process and the legislative process and other things. Uh, it, I feel so much better coming in. I feel like I have a clue actually now. So, Stan, are there two vice presidents and then president and past president? Is no, that, it's, it's second vice, then vice, then president. And it usually, like I said, me and Victor are both county commissioners, and then we have the affiliate group in between. So, so what happens if somebody is in line, that line of succession, and they don't get reelected? Is that ever, is funny that funny ever happened? That. We just took care of this and uh, some of our things that we've been doing this year to be able to take care of that in our policy because there wasn't something in, in place. So Victor saw that happening and we got that into our policy now to where if somebody happens to be voted out, then the succession is already in place and how that and how that takes place. So I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, I, I think historically, I'd like to look at some of the issues. We talk about issues that are very important to UAC on this program every week. We've done it for a number of years. Um, but always the focus is changing because the issue changes. You know, sales tax is quiet for a number of years and then all of a sudden it becomes a big deal this year. And then, you know, uh, public lands get kind of quiet for a while and then they become a big issue. What has been the focus of your presidency? Well, I think uh, this has been kind of a, a change as far as our organization. I think it's important for the, the viewers to recognize what the Utah Association Association of Counties really does and the diversity that we have in our counties. I mean, Salt Lake is, is a very urbanized metropolitan area, but yet we also have some of our very small counties like Daggett County that has some of the same concerns, but they're different. Like every county has public safety and jails that they need to worry about. Um, we also have different elected officials within the counties that we need to, to kind of make sure that their voices are heard and that they're receiving kind of the information that they need. This year we we started with surveying our members. We asked them, you know, what would you like to see out of UAC? And from that survey, we, we made some changes. We started holding our staff more accountable. Um, we chose to um, select a new CEO to lead the organization. And of course, we're also suggesting a variety of changes to make the, in our bylaws, to make the organization stronger. So your focus has been on the strength and the structure of the organization yeah. itself during the course of your year. Absolutely. So now that that work's done, going into the present, what, what do you see as the goals that are immediately need attention? Well, I wish it were done. Victor's done a fantastic job, but with an organization this complex, it, it'll take a couple of years. You're not dissing him then, right? No, no absolutely not. <laughs> okay. No, he, he carried a huge burden this year and did a fantastic job. So for the coming year, I hope to build on that. We still have some additional changes that we want to make that we felt were just not, we just didn't have enough time to get all of them in. Um, and so we're going to take a look at our due structure, for example which is a pretty complex cal calculation. We want to simplify it and make sure it, it works for all the membership. Uh, and then I think we're going to look at uh, efficiency and, and looking at government not just as a business, 
but uh, as the unique business that government is. Uh, and so we'll take a look at that. You know, I, I had a professor in college that, that talked about the fact that he says that good government should never be, the goal should never be total efficiency, it's his effectiveness. Um, and, and the example he used is this, there's nothing efficient about war. If you have to declare war on another country, you have to win. And so it becomes inefficient. And of course, that doesn't apply to county government exactly, but sometimes those decisions have to be a little bit different. A year down the road, what kind of solutions in the outside world? How does the structure of the organization, do you think, affect the ability for counties to do the things they need to do for their constituents? And I've kind of looked at this ever since I've become a member going on my second term, the end of my second term. And if I become president, it would be my third term. But I look at it as kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet. And paying your dues, you get to have a seat at the table. And you can come to that buffet and you can be as, you know, get your plate as full as much as you want and partake or you can sit back and you know not do anything and I think the people who get the most out of this thing is just the people that actually go take the buffet and go back to the table many 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 times you know and we've talked about some of the things that you know people like Darren Bushman have done that have been able to bring millions of dollars to a, to a county like Paiute without these kind of relationships without these kind of connections with the state and federal government these type of things wouldn't happen for a little state like Utah you know we have two senators you know, four congressmen. It's well, we could be Wyoming and have one congressman. Well, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing. We just, we, we really take advantage of that f seat at the table and, and we're able to do the things because of the things that we do with, with UAC and having a seat at the table and, and be able to go. Do you guys think that the federal delegation would be as responsive to counties uh, in junkets if it weren't for UAC? No, I think one of the things that the Utah Association of Counties is constantly asking itself is what value are we bringing back to our members? And, and a part of that is speaking with a common voice and really being able to articulate to, to our delegation. We have a delegation that works very closely with local and state governments. And uh, we also work very closely with our state government because UAC is able to, to speak. Um, and really, they're not speaking, we're, UAC isn't speaking for county government per se as much as for the people inside those counties because obviously we're a political subdivision of the state. But that question, what value are we bringing back what, as an organization back to each county? And um, for our smaller counties, that might be something different than our, our larger counties. But or in transitioning counties. I yes. mean, basically, in your term, you've gone from being your self-perception as a rural county to more of an urban county. And so that's... Well, you bring up a great point. Um, we have a couple counties, uh, Cache County, for example, which is a county of the third class, and they have now reached a population level that they're going to become a county of the second class. And we have Utah County that is, is fastly approaching county of the first class. As you go through state code, uh, we realize that there's over 2,800 different distinctions in state code based on classification of counties. It's critical that those counties have an organization that can advocate and speak to the legislature about those concerns and how to make that adjustment more gentle and, and better so it doesn't impact the taxpayers so harshly, I guess would be a word. Well, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to pick up the conversation. And I want to talk a little bit about what you get out of uh, UAC, just as far as the different components. So stay with us. We'll be right back with our conversation here at the Utah Association of Counties. A chance for you to look behind the curtain and see how this works. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the county seat. We're having a conversation with an outgoing president, an incoming president, and a president who is in waiting uh, for this organization. Uh, we kind of talked about your personal perspective of this organization, but I want to talk about what commissioners actually get out of it. I mean, people say, okay, you've got a, you've got a three-day conference and you do one in the spring, you do one in the fall, and you do one in November. What value do you get out of this? Any of oh, it's huge value. Um, we have, we'll have about 300 and so people here. Um, and probably a third of them will be commissioners and council members and executives. Uh, but the biggest thing that I get is I get to rub shoulders with every other county elected official throughout the state. And uh, we all have our own unique issues and 
uh, things that we have to deal with, but there are so many things that we deal with in common. And it's so nice to talk to someone from another county, big or small or far away, or, and, and say, how do you do it? And we share ideas. That's, but for me, that is by far the best thing I get out of, out of these conferences. It's sharing best practices and ideas, sometimes maybe sharing a shoulder to, to cry on. <laughs> um, uh, but it's, it's the networking by far. Okay, so that's on the personal level. How about the training? I mean, is, 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 there, is there enough organized training in this that it, it's kind of like, you know, getting your 50 hours of continuing education in as a doctor? Well, it's absolutely critical. I mean, obviously, we break out as far as elected organizations. Uh, Ricky is a clerk auditor, and you think about how much elections has changed over the last couple of years and how critical it's been for them to get together and be able to talk about how they're going to implement vote by mail, for example, and, and the, the same thing with the assessors. Um, as far as evaluations and taxes, uh, commissioners, uh, we have kind of a, a larger toolbox or a more diverse toolbox that we talk about. And so with each one of our, our constitu or each one of our affiliate groups, as we call them, we're able to break out and we have tracks, as, you know, presentations on, on up and coming uh, issues that we're dealing with and um, both urban and rural and, and also our other elected officials. Is this efficient, an efficient way for somebody like Brian Steed from DNR to, uh, who has to talk about some kind of natural resource issue to take time in a presentation where it's got everybody together? Yeah, it is because the plain fact that then all 4,500 of us don't have to go to his office in Salt Lake and, or back at the BLM, you know, when he was the director of BLM. And the thing is, when we're here, um, it's nothing for us to go in and sit in an auditor's meeting or to a clerk's meeting or to a sheriff's meeting, you know, for us commissioners. So it's not like they show your credentials at the door and you can only come into this one meeting. If there's something that's interesting you on taxes or jails or something else that's happening with voting, we're able to, you know, cross-reference that stuff and go find out what's going on because sometimes people think that, you know, the commissioners and council people are the ones with the heavy hand and stick. We do the... We do the budgets, we do everything else, but really we- You don't we have any say over it, really. Yeah. If it's another elected official, they don't work for you, right? Right. So is that, is that quote, cross-training, does that make your jobs better? Oh, yeah. I think what it really does is it allows us to bring good ideas back into our own county. As we see best, best practices in other counties, we're able to bring it back and save our, our constituents, our voters money, implement uh, solutions to their problems, and there's been quite a few times that I've, through conversations or through breakout sessions, there'll be an idea that'll be developed and we'll be able to bring it back to, to our county and, and institute it and, and save our taxpayers money. So currently right now, you guys have stepped out of both a rural caucus and an urban caucus to be here. Um, and so I'm just, I'm wondering uh, if, if the collective efforts of the group, does this, advance an agenda that you can present to the world? Do you, do you, I guess the question is, do you guys really solve problems when you get together down here? I think we do. I, I really do. I think there's, uh, there's obviously some issues, Salt Lake County and some of the urban counties, they don't have public lands. Uh, they're not 90% public land. So, you know, there, there is breakouts where we talk mostly about public lands, but we all have public safety issues. We all have transportation issues. We all have election issues and we all have, you know, uh, assessors and recorders and, and county attorneys as well. So there's, there's a lot of good things that happen. Indeed. Well, with the roll of thunder, it's time to take a break. We'll be right back here at the convention center, uh, the Dixie Center in St. George with the county seat. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking today with uh, the leadership of UAC, past president, current president, incoming president. Uh, I, I want to uh, I want to go into issues. Yeah. Okay. The organization's fine, people need to understand it, but the guy sitting on his couch uh, in Hurricane and the guy sitting in his couch at Grouse Creek and the, the guy in downtown Ogden, they're all things that affect them. What are the issues that counties are advancing? What are the problems and challenges you see in the future? And I'll just toss it out there. Well, I think some of the issues that we've all been dealing with is uh, criminal justice, kind of our, you know, our mental health issues. We, we all have mental health 
Well, I guess we could say we all have mental health issues because we're in county government, but, but all of us in you know, dealing with, with justice, dealing with our jails, dealing with our sheriff's office, law enforcement, public safety, those have all been critical issues over the last couple of years as we've been trying to meet the needs of our, of our citizens. And obviously transportation is there a big one as well. Needs are, are in flux all the time. Yeah. You, you, you set a 20 year plan for Washington County and you have to revise it halfway through because the next 20 years is already looking different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another big thing that's coming up is, of course, the tax reform, which the county's play will be heavily impacted in that, so we want to have a voice at the table for that. Uh, elections security and cybersecurity, and I think uh, security of the county as a whole, there's all sorts of bad guys out there and risk, and we just need to make sure we're prepared, so that, that's a big deal. Are you guys alarmed at the rate that's happening? No, I think because everything's happening so fast with technology, we're in that situation. And then Victor touched on it a little bit about public safety. You know, we're 300 plus officers down in the state when it comes to these things. And I think we need to tackle, you know, to be able to uh, actually bring these people back to retire back into other places and not wait a year. You know, we've got people that have 20 and 30 years that we've invested in them. And now they have to wait a year before they're reemployed. And somehow we need to be able to get that back. And then another big thing in the future with when Ricky's president, all first president, is going to be the suicide awareness. It's been a big thing for really rural and communities that they've got a thing out now called QPR instead of CPR that will be taken out to the counties and showing people that, you know, we lost a deputy to suicide just last week, 15-year um, veteran, and we're not going to let that happen anymore if we can. Wow. Uh, that's just that's it's a staggering the staggering thought what are the what are the optimistic things i mean utah's a pretty great state it is it absolutely is you know we have a, an economic vibrancy that's going on it's it's not universal we we're working very hard to spread it into our more rural communities i think a, a lot of counties are in transition. My county is growing very fast, so we have major infrastructure issues when you talk about water, when you talk about transportation. But I'd rather deal with those types of challenges mm -hmm. than, than stagnation, than, than you know, poverty that you can't solve. I mean, we, we do have challenges, but boy, there's a lot of great things going on in the state and county governments I think are really stepping up and I don't mean to say that just because we're in county government but I'm very optimistic about the future. Well you know Daggett County has a lot of infrastructure problems too they need a second traffic light. They do. <laughs> we were at 14 percent unemployment when I became a commissioner and now you know eight years later we're less than two percent unemployment and I tell people it's like the I-15 corridor if you're living along I-15 things are good in your county because of the growth and the things that are happening. And like Victor said, the more rural things off of I-15, you know, Darren Bushman's got a really good initiative going to be able to take some of these jobs off of the I-15 and get it done. So it's, it's been amazing what he can do. Well, we're going to take one more break. We're going to come back for some final thoughts. You're watching the county seat. This has been very informative, uh, talking about UAC and the things that county leaders have to deal with in your behalf all the time. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking to three distinguished elected officials from across the state. They're all in leadership at UAC. Uh, you know, I, 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 we've got just about a minute for each of you to tell, tell us one thing about what is the most important thing that has happened to you in your experience in UAC. What, what is the biggest fear, the biggest problem, the biggest accomplishment, your biggest satisfaction, any of them? Uh, we'll just go down the row. Well, I just, you know, UAC is something that I've always believed in, this idea that we can come together and learn from each other. It was actually my experience of UAC, in UAC as a, as a representative of a, of a U.S. senator that actually made me want to get involved in my own county government. So in a lot of ways, I'm sitting here today because of the UAC conferences that I attended prior to being a county commissioner. Ricky? Well, when I joined UAC, I was a little bit of a, not a government hater, but I was skeptical, and I felt that if you were elected, that meant you were egotistical and uh, a little bit, uh, you know, prideful, and all you cared about was your next election. And in my experience, that is so far from the truth. Of course, once in a while you find someone who's got that at the back of their mind, but they're really county officials, city officials, even our state representatives, they're 
trying to do the best thing, they, the best job that they can. And sometimes we disagree, and that's healthy, and that's that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, I'm just really pleased with the leadership of the counties that I see and the leadership of the state. Excellent, Stan. I think what Ricky said, just because um, we don't agree doesn't mean we can't get along. And I think at the end of the day, we do the good for the whole, and the whole is for the state and for our constituents and for the people that actually pay the taxes. I pay taxes just like anybody else. These guys pay taxes like anybody else. And when we're looking at it, and I've always looked at it as a business, it's the business of the people. And that's the things that we have to continue to do is realize that we're spending these people's hard-earned money to do the things we have to do in government and to keep things going what we're doing. I do want to take just a minute to talk about how important elected county officials are and that in the nine years we've been doing this program, it's been an honor to deal with so many of them that, that um, may get a bad rap in the press, but really are dedicated, hardworking people. And I think if most of you had any idea how many hours these guys put in, a lot of them are working full-time jobs on a part-time salary. And I'm not meaning to look at you, Stan, but I know how many hours you you put on behalf of your county. It's a very impressive relationship. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we will continue to bring you as much county information as we can. Just remember, local government is where your life happens. Be involved, be part of the solution. The easiest way to do that is to follow us on social media and YouTube, and be sure to tune in next week to the County Z.